Let's make sure we're coming out of that. And there we are. Nice. Hi, everyone. This is Joe. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is May 2nd, 2022. And we're doing a math tutoring session number 80 or thereabouts. Let's do some mathematics. Open discussion. And we've done a lot of these and this is the core essence of what my work is about uh, which is basically trying to layer everything on mathematics i'm just popping out the chat here make sure we're hooked up the live stream is coming in let's do our free assange free assange free assange message Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity, something that we desperately need in our societies. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Sensor 2. With that little message, we know that our chat's hooked up. Notifications will go out. John Sonachi, how are you doing? What's up, my man? <laughs> mate, mate, that's what it is, eh? I wonder what the short version of a man, my man would be. MM, MM, M8, mate, mate, cool. You must be British, John. You were here, yes, two days ago. Two days ago, we did the, our uh, Surviving the World Economics Forum Great Reset. Ah, we can build better back better right it was a good stream good conversations uh, for those of you that uh, might be new here might want to know what this is about uh, the core essence of what I do is mathematics uh, and I believe that if everyone was literate in the language of mathematics in the world the world would be a much better place to live for all of us so that's what I decided to lay everything on the foundation of John I spent a lot of time in North e Northwest Europe I'm doing okay you not bad not bad uh, nice and chill uh, been working in the background doing a lot of stuff Mathematic Monday MM, Mathematics Monday elder God how are you doing hope you're doing well there's one thing I I wanted to do was uh, uh, just because uh, it connects up to economics slick mick how are you doing hello hello cheryl how ya? how you doing miss you on the weekend uh one thing uh, that we know that's going on through economics and politics is that tax taxes are going up right mm -hmm. and if digital currency is rolled out then everything will be taxed so i thought maybe today at some point we'll do a little uh, compound interest and related to taxation and figure out how long it'll take for the complete amount of a hundred dollars <laughs> to that anyone spends to go to all of it to get to go to taxes all you got to do is do the jump right see how many jumps it takes casinos in uh, vegas have made trillions of dollars hundreds of billions of dollars uh, playing with a three percent advantage for them right governments take a third off the top plus in canada bc 15 percent off of anything necessary really in your life and the luxuries even more <laughs> governments are bankrupt sort of goes to show you uh, how competent bureaucrats are in our society and what they do with our tax dollars is insane slick mc99 speaking of difficult math problems what do you get uh, what do you get in this problem stupid numpy billionaire plus 44 billion plus twitter plus desire to free speech <laughs> what do you get you get a lot of data for his near link connection right you also get a different business model for twitter where there's going to be subscription based which is a lot of things are going subscription based uh even life is subscription based now right 
<laughs> what do you get? Uh, you get a you get a you get a poop show. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> On a more serious note, I'm stoked to learn about compound interest. Yeah, we could definitely do. We could definitely do. And I should do my little intro. I should do my little intro. Gang, if you want to know what this work is about, I am on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Chicho. C-H-Y-C-H-O. For those of you that are supporting this work on Patreon, gang, thank you very much for the support. Um, for those of you who have been on there from the get-go, thank you from the bottom of my heart. For those of you that are new to Patreon supporting this work, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Just a heads up, gang. I got a little message from Patreon saying that uh, automated message, they might require authentication and stuff like this and this, this before we can take payouts. So uh, what's up, baby night five, how are you doing? So, um, which is, we could see that coming slowly. Um, we do have a subscribe star page, links in the description of the video once it's been uploaded to our video sharing platforms and it's available on multiple places on my social network links and i've just started mirroring everything that we're doing on patreon and subscribe star and more so than block spot because that's where everything's going because they're censoring on substack i'm gonna see if i can do a migration into substack i gotta play around with it see um what uh features it has it has a podcasting feature as well which is fantastic so i gotta play around with it when i get a little bit of time I did end up buying a brand new computer. We will start live streaming on Rumble as well. So we're doing a fair bit of stuff. So if any of if on any of these platforms we get knocked out, look for us uh, other places. For now though, gang, thank you very much for the support on Patreon. Big old Ben. Big old Benji, how are you doing? Hey Chicho. I am studying for uh, my calculus two final right now integration and now uh, I was wondering if you could do some examples of Taylor oh man Taylor Paul no I've done that stuff forever for I would have to look it up last time I did Taylor uh, Taylor series and uh, I actually used it a, a little bit if I remember correctly if, um, if it's connected up to the same stuff uh, for geophysics and whatnot but I haven't looked at the stuff for 30 years <laughs> right i'm not sure if there's a topic right now i would just appreciate some help uh, have a good stream. i could look it up i could look it up uh real quick um let me finish off my intro uh, anti-social behavior how are you doing uh, which billionaires are the bad bad ones now i can't keep up with the times also do we hate privatization or love it C crazy questions right <laughs> agree with you i'm all like what's going on uh is it build your own twitter this week or is it quote free speech is a human right time the left is so hard to keep up with so hard so hard it's clown world gang good thing mathematics is consistent persistent absolute beautiful no 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 dogmas mathematics is the core essence of what it means to build a society that we can all be proud of right zahavip zahavip first time chat finally got a live stream welcome welcome i've been following you for a few years now and just created a twitch account to say thank you for the public service you provide with your content i've been more aware of what is going going around in the world politically because of your open discussions and just started making the cure just like you teaching your videos again thank you very much for the time you spent doing that oh my pleasure my pleasure Zahavip. thank you very much for creating going to the trouble of creating an account <laughs> joining our tw twitch and uh posting a message i appreciate it really um and i do this because i need to do this um it, it, you know it's uh, and, and i've been telling people a long time uh, it's for selfish reasons i want to i want a better world to live in <laughs> really i'm tired of this clown show i'm tired of corruption i'm tired of um good-hearted people uh standing by while while evil is is done 
in their name and with their money i'm doing this because i'm selfish i want a better world to live in i want to i want to go out and play i don't want uh these clowns in charge and that is why i do what i do and i figured that out in 2015 when i got online i figured this is what i needed to do okay <laughs> because the same clowns are still here right or those same clowns zahavip no problem greetings for portugal portugal greetings greetings uh slick 99 i was just wondering if there is like a proof or something that results in the current compound interest formula uh for sure for sure i i don't remember it uh i'm pretty sure i looked at it at some point uh and it's more a derivation uh, than a i guess i don't know what's the difference between proof and derivation proof is you prove something um, well no i'm not going to go there but it's a derivation really right you model it exponential growth compound interest and stuff like this and you get your functions and then uh, your graphs and your data and you model according to the data and you say oh this is compound interest right uh, that's sort of the way i would go about it uh, and then there's mathematical proofs algebraic proof that might be the first math question i'm just afraid when these clowns leave that new ones will arrive that's why we need everyone liter literate baby baby night that's why we need everyone literate in the language of mathematics because once everyone's literate in the math math uh, language of mathematics uh you can call bs a mile away right you see bs coming a mile away if everybody was literate in the language of mathematics they would look at data presented by centralized power and go get out of my life All right end of story ronnie chicho i have a big exam tomorrow morning going to take a break today awesome take a break take a break gang for those of you that are supporting this work on twitch which is where we're live streaming gang thank you very much for the support thank you for being here um thank you for the love thank you for the subs thank you for the comments thank you for uh the follows and mods 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 thank you for being here and taking care of business i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on my vk gap part of the getter and bitcloud and we'll see what other platforms we go to uh depending on uh what's taking place for live streams where we don't have any visuals we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast and those podcasts are available in your favorite podcasting platform including spotify itunes google play and what not we will be uploading this live stream in segments and in whole to beep beep sensor tube to pitch to rumble and to odyssey if you are watching this content on sensor tube sensor tube is now a garbage platform i kid you not as a creator it is horrendous okay so if you want to follow this work bitshoot rumble and odyssey these are the three platforms that i personally prefer you watch my content sensor tube is pure garbage now and it's going to become more and more garbage and they're 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 losing their foothold on humanity information is filtering through on multiple other platforms um, these are three of them where i'm active and more of course and that is what we need in our societies open discussion open dialogue without the technocrats censoring our lives right uh but we'll load it on there as well and we do have a gilded page if you want to participate in discussion outside of these live streams in a forum format go to gilded.gg backslash forward slash i forget which one that is chicho chicho i'm no longer really active on discord discord came out and said there are now technocrats and they will begin censoring channels platforms and whatnot because they're trying to go public um and i don't think they need to do that because rumble rumble this platform video sharing platform is public but they have integrity uh, so all the technocratic sites with technocrats that have zero integrity we're divesting from them and going into more um, more disruptive innovation where real human beings share information aside from that gang let's 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 take these guys down take these guys down take these guys down let me look up taylor series let me look up Taylor series. Let me see if I remember Taylor series. 
Oh man, I know that graph. Taylor series. Let me look at the formula. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. Oh my. I wouldn't be able to do this right now, brother. Or sister, of course. Oh, look at this. The McLaren series for exponential functions. Awesome. The Taylor series for uh, any polynomial. Another series for this. Um, n factorial, then also factorial of n, blah, 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 the Taylor series of a real or complex value function. Check this out. Check this out. Let's write it down. Let's write it down. Let's write it down. Hold on. Let me check chat. Let me make sure uh, I'm staying on top. Pumpkin kinies. Hey, Chicho, my cat just ran away today. We can't find. Oh, no. Poop. When we moved here, our cats uh, escaped as well, like three or four times. So we uh, pumpkin, we built a, a catio chicken wiring and I had to plug up the holes. And um, what I ended up doing is uh, it, depending on your kitty cat, one of our kitty cat was his food, uh, his tummy drives him. Uh, the other kitty cat doesn't. So uh, if you know, Sal is the one food driven. So when Sal escaped, uh, I went out there with treats and ran around and sh shook the treat treat can hoping that it would come close and as soon as i heard him i would kneel down and open up the treats and go like this and he, they very hesitant when they run away they don't want to come close and then slowly i would leave droppings further away get him closer to me and then when he came close i zapped them right uh, via on the hand not food driven uh, i had to chase that little bugger around for a while and um, it ended up coming home uh twice he did that um and we had to go outside and grab him uh so i'm sorry to hear uh pumpkin but cats have amazing radars um amazing ability to find their way home okay uh pumpkin thanks for the tip she normally goes outside our balcony but comes home this time she didn't oh no we live in sweden oh sweden okay okay yeah um just a warning uh, heads up. Uh, should I even give this heads up uh, just a heads up we have three different suites in the building we live uh, two of us have cats uh, one other person moved in recently not recently a few months ago and the kitty cat from the other suite is was really old and stuff and that kitty cat was used to going in front of the back door of this third person and sort of meowing getting treats or cuddles and stuff like this and um, the kitty cat went there and this person didn't realize it was a kitty cat from people that live in the same building uh, so she took the kitty cat to the spca which is uh, the animal shelter here and i guess because the kitty cat was old and uh, like i don't know 18 years old had cancer it was really frail they put the kitty cat down so we were like what the f uh, our neighbor with the cat she was really really uh, devastated uh, so maybe check with people in your neighborhood if they've seen the kitty cat um, that's one of the things we did as well <laughs> yeah they got crazy crazy pumpkin pumpkin eyes Thanks for the tip. She normed that that right that we live in Sweden. Cheryl, putting the litter box outside can help also. It can also oh really didn't even think about that. The litter box outside. Because they smell their own litter, they know how to come. Find it. Baby night. I have a math riddle if you want. Until someone with questions comes in. Okay, here's a math riddle. Here's the riddle. So you can solve it if you want. Rules are. You can use all math operations but you cannot add any digits or not equal sign you can use what you can use all math operations but you cannot add any digits or not equal signs ah okay okay well that message is messed up uh -huh. <laughs> what <laughs> so it's not that one i'm looking at that going wow zero 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 equals six one 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 
zero 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 equals six divided by zero 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 equals six oh is that what you're doing oh okay i'm gonna write this riddle down wow that's a that's just so you can add in no not equal sign okay so here's the riddle so you can add i'm going to write this down da, 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 and then 888 equals six so you can use any math operation but you cannot add any digits or not equal to sign okay so the riddle is this zero 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 equals six one 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 equals six two 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 equals six three 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 equals six four 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 equals six five 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 equals six five 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 equals six yeah okay cool six 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 equals six uh, seven 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 equals six Eight 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 equals six. Nine 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 equals six. And do we have ten ten ten? Yeah. So ten 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 equals six. So one of the ones, if you, so, you can add any operation in this to make this legit, right? So for example, I'll give you one here. Two plus two plus two is equal to six. Is this what we're talking about, baby knight? Consequence little boxes. So share regarding the kitty cat. Uh, pumpkin eyes litter box use caution if you're in a more rural area because it can also draw other ah good good point Cheryl for example solution to two yeah okay so that's that's the thing all I can hear is the omen music <laughs> number of the beast oh my god <laughs> omen is a scary movie uh, Nicholas what's going on what's up Chicho hope uh, you all have a great stream can't stick around on a date with the wife awesome salutations wife hope you guys are having a fantastic fantastic evening a uh, fantastic date cheryl was this second uh talking about that with my brother he said the same thing okay so that would be one um uh, another one would be this six plus six minus six equals six what else three times three minus three is six three times three is nine minus six minus three is six uh, what else could we do the zero zero one is crazy zero 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 equals six uh, So only operations doing good so far. Wow. Five. Oh, that's great. Anti-socialist behavior. Check out the five. So five plus all oh, brackets. I forgot about brackets divided by five. That's great. So five divided by five is one. And then five plus one is six. Awesome, awesome. Brackets, brackets. We forgot about brackets. Or I did anyway. Yeah, zeros are very interesting. Zeros are would be trippy. This one, what would these guys be? One, one, one. Uh, we can't add any digits. We can't add any digits. Oh, we could do this uh, mine is on the same principle as five does someone else get it yeah 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 on the same principle as five so we're building from what we know right so said real and Ronnie said at the same time you could go like this bracket bracket divided by right so seven divided by seven is one seven minus one is six that's good 
That's good. Anti-socialist behavior. Let's check this out. But we can't add digits. Is anti-socialist behavior? Is that? Does that work? Uh, baby night. Anti-socialist behavior is saying this. Uh, four squared. That doesn't work. Anti-socialist behavior. Four squared is uh, sixteen. Sixteen divided by four is four. It's not adding a digit. It's squaring it. Oh, okay. But that still doesn't work. You're saying this one for four, four plus? Yeah, plus four squared divided by four. Four squared is 16. 16 divided by four is four. Four plus four is not six, it's eight. Yeah, okay. But is that true? Uh, uh, baby nights? Anti that would be adding a digit. So, oh, so you can't do this. Okay, so we can't add a digit. So we can't add a digit. Okay, stricter, stricter. We can't add a digit. Eight, nine. Hmm. I can't think of anything else right now. Oh yeah, would square root be uh okay here, baby knight, here's a question that square root good uh nice good thing for bringing that out. Square root of four times four times four. No, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, but then the square root of 64 is 8, it's not 6. Here's a question for you, uh, Baby Knight. Square root of A, you said, here, let's, let's make this a number, right? So you said 4 to the power of 2, that was equivalent to adding a number. But square root of 4 is also 4 to the power of a half. So taking a square root, would that also be considered adding a number? Oh, very good, Iced. Yeah, so, okay, so we need to have this answered. Okay, is the square root of 4 adding a number? Because we are adding a number. I'm just not sure what we are allowed, not allowed to do. Square root of 4 is 2, so you can use it. Yeah, oh, okay, so if that's the case, then you can go like this. Okay, so you can go square root of 4 plus the square root of 4 plus the square root of 4, right? That's 6. 2 plus 2 plus 2, right? 4 times 4 plus the square root of 4. So square root of 4, yeah, yeah. And what uh, C death is saying, square root of 4 times 4 plus the square root of 4. So square root of 4 times 4 plus the square root of 4. Now square roots you can just separate, but 64, which is going to be, oh, 8 minus 2. It would have to be minus. You could do it that way as well. Minus, minus square root of 4, which is 2, it would be 6. So we could do it that way. There's two ways to do that one. Um, uh, da, 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 what else we got? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the 9, who was that? Iced. So square root of 9 times the square root of 9, and then, what? Yeah, 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 minus the square root of 9. Right? Yeah, that'll work. Ice, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, perfect ice. Perfect. So on the same note, we could do this. Cube root of 8, cube root of 8, cube root of 8. Add them together, you get 6. Because the cube root of 8... 4, 2, 2, 2, so cube root of 8 is 2. 
So can we do cube root of 8? We must be able to do cube root of 8. Because square root, there's an imaginary 2 there as well. Right? Oh, cube root. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Antisocialist behavior. That would have worked for 4 if we did cube root. Cube root of 4 um, would be 4 and then plus so another way so we found three ways to do number four uh, if this was square root it would be cube root of four times four uh, plus the square root of four that's 64 cube root of 64 is four plus two would have been six so there's three ways to do number four which is great yeah yeah nice uh, antisocialist behavior Joe Chicho I saw a numerical puzzle yesterday that would be fun to solve it would probably uh, be easier if I posted it on the math channel on discord or I could try and uh, type it out here yeah Joe um, if it's easier uh, not on discord though uh, gilded <laughs> I'm barely going to discord anymore um, uh, but you could do it on discord as well but I'm not going to go to Discord right now. I don't want to accidentally interrupt the stream. We are stream rolling it. We are. We are. We're doing well. And gang, do not forget. Free Assange. Free Assange. Free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on sensor tube Cheryl I have a non math but learning related question that I would love to ask this group uh, anyone know for sure ask away oh, factorial factorial uh, one one apart factorial I totally forgot about factorials that's right so let's see we've done we've got this one 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 and we've got this one the only ones we're missing is 10 and 0 that's it those are the only ones we're missing 10 oh anti-socialist behavior let's check this out but i thought we said we couldn't do square root 8 minus the square root as well oh baby knight says eight minus the fourth root yeah 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 so square root square root so square root so for number eight we could do this as well for number eight we could go eight minus the square root square root of eight times eight so eight times eight is 64 square root of 64 is four square root of four is two eight minus two would be six factorials i want to think about the zero let's check it out so anti-socialist behavior 10 to the power zero plus 10 to the power zero squared two squared no anti-socialist behavior that wouldn't work actually i think i remember this from long ago which other god says also ones are missing Oh yeah, so ones. We gotta do ones as well. Awesome. Thank you for that. And one. Six plus eight. GG baby. <laughs> nice. Cube roots are technically aren't allowed because you aren't allowed to write digits. Oh, you're not allowed to write digits. Okay, so we can't do this one. Uh so if you're not allowed cube roots, then we can go with this one. You're not allowed to write digits. See, here's the thing. Square root implies there's a two there. So we're sort of writing a digit, but it's implied. But let's use this one. Eight minus the square root, square root of eight times, oops, eight. So that comes out to six, right? 10 to the power of zero is one, yeah. So 10 to the power of 0 is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. 2, yeah. So let's check it out. Anti-socialist behavior. 2 squared. Oh, so we do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 10. Check this out. That's great. Um, 
oh but we're not allowed to write digits we can't write squared anti-socialist behavior we can't write squared yeah we can't write squared though that's one of the rules right we can't add any digits here's Cheryl's uh, question uh, Cheryl says this is especially for anyone that struggled with or actively dislike writing while in middle high school were you able to get past it what were you able to get past it if so how the, oh how were you able to get past writing if you didn't like it so here's the question um so cheryl asked let's check it out i have a non-math but learning related question that i would love to ask this group and here's the question to anyone this is especially for anyone that struggled with or actively dislike writing while in middle high school were you able to get past it if so how so if you didn't like writing in middle school or high school uh, how did you get past that uh, sort of blockage I I personally didn't like it <laughs> I didn't really get past it until in my 30s to tell you the truth and that was just out of anger because I wanted to communicate so I had to learn how to communicate and I was pissed off that our indoctrination centers didn't uh, didn't teach me see that draw a square around it let's see I reject baby night reality and substitute my own antisocial behavior says <laughs> and then baby night the replies says it's much more fun this way Joe uh, Chicho I'll try and type it out uh, quote in numeric okay so this is the next puzzle okay let's finish off this one and then we'll hit up Joe's uh, Joe's puzzle it's more logic than math but it's still fun actually let me read it while we figure out what zero one and ten are like uh, so Joe's puzzle is this quote a numeric lock has a three-digit key now here are some clues S six eight two one number is correct and well placed six one four one number is correct but wrongly placed this is like mastermind two zero six two numbers are correct but wrongly placed nothing is correct seven eight zero one number is correct but wrongly placed seven three eight nothing is correct so eight doesn't belong in there we'll write that out I like that I like mastermind mastermind is a great game I people were allowed to use computers to type if their handwriting was too bad or had some sort of learning difficulty for me when I grew up in the 80s in high school um, my handwriting was horrendous and a teacher refused to mark my essays so I had to learn how to print uh, and at the time we didn't have computers so I couldn't type it out you got typewriters but I was gonna typewrite it out um, so I had to struggle through it uh, I had to learn how to print because my script writing the teacher wouldn't read uh, and I had to learn how to script write not print uh, when I came to Canada and uh, and I just learned English like four years ago so four years ago four years previous to the teacher saying okay I won't use get zeros on all your essays <laughs> so in four years I learned how to write English but now the teacher was saying I can't read it you're gonna have to print it man what a difficult period I didn't like that teacher Ronnie great question Cheryl but she she was right my, my writing was scribble chicken scribble I personally so Ronnie's replying great question Cheryl I personally hated any class that required writing essays English literature and history I think if you have patience and find the beauty in in elegant writing that really helps spark interest in writing 
Uh, and then Ronnie continues, I found the interest in college and ended up acing these literature classes. Um, one thing on Ronnie's note for me that when I got into writing, uh, a friend of mine really uh, emphasized the importance of using the correct word in a sentence. So to me, it became a game picking the right word to use in a sentence when I got into writing again, right? So I found meaning in words, sort of a motivation for me to write uh, and to simplify. Uh, editing, I liked editing my own work, just getting rid of stuff. Now they got, I had the same problem. First a good pen, then return to the basics of sentence structure. Uh, Elder God says, and then Ronnie, if you just don't care or lack passion, it's so tough to do anything. Yeah, I'm going back to the puzzle. Let people chat through this. Uh, we need to find one for ten ones and zeros. One, two. Hmm. How do we do? just brainstorm my snacks I got sugar-coated dried fruit papaya ginger and pineapple these chunks are pineapple really nice it's it's not a good snack but well let me rephrase it's not a healthy snack or a good snack See death, brilliant, brilliant. Ten, he's saying ten. We forgot the decimal. Check that out. Ten, one point zero plus one point zero plus one point zero. Oh no, that's not six. That's three. <laughs> what am I doing? Um, I just g loved it. The decimal. So decimal, how would we do this? No, let me write down 10, 10 again. <laughs> we want it to be 6, not 3. <laughs> 10, 10, 10. Um, this one. No, no, that one. What are we going to do that one? Oh, I don't know. Where are we? I got all excited. So Elder God says 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. I think I'm right. One plus one plus four. No, but we can't add any more digits, right? Three factorial is six. Oh, that's right. That's right. What am I saying? Where the one? So three factorial would be point one plus one plus one. Close this and then factorial right who came up with that one antisocial behavior or elder god yes and then use factorial oh and this one too then and this one too that's right the 10 what so this is the same thing as one right is that correct Credit to anti-socialist behavior. Okay, awesome. It was a group effort. It was a group effort. So the, so we got this one. And we got this one. So we need zeros. How are we going to deal with zeros? <laughs> definitely not me. <laughs> Ronnie's like, definitely not me. <laughs> one and ten are the same, basically. How do you do zeros? Oh yeah, zeros is the same as one. What? Zeros you would just go zero factorial plus zero factorial plus zero factorial, all of it factorial. That's it. 
that's the same thing so 1 10 and 0 are the same right that's all it would be <laughs> let's write it here yeah 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 so zero factorial plus zero factorial plus zero factorial all of it factorial right winner winner chicken dinner elder god says baby night yeah that will work you can also do tens like square root of let's see square root of 10 minus 10 oh yeah 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 square square root 10 minus 10 is 0 0 divided by 10 is 0 square root of 0 is 0 0 factorial uh is 1 <laughs> let me get that <laughs> anyway anyway yeah right my brain hurts ah oh, this is great this is a great problem this is a great problem excellent excellent love it love it i thought he had to go into uh, trigonometry somehow oh a trig i wonder if you could do some trig operations here uh, no maybe not and incorporate radians and degrees haha <laughs> fun problem fun problem crazy that this is this is one thing that works and this is goes in with life in general when you get stuck somewhere sometimes a solution for a problem resolves a whole bunch of other problems it's the same solution but modified a little so 10 1 and 0 were all the same solution slightly modified so as soon as we saw 1 and then we could see 10 or we saw 10 and then we saw 1 and then 0 right so if a train leaves vancouver at 2 p.m traveling 40 kilometers per hour <laughs> i hope it's 40 kilometers per hour let's do joel joe's problem check this out this is a mastermind so where was it where was it i'm gonna write it out write it up here's the, here's the problem i'm gonna erase this thank you uh baby night for the puzzle awesome awesome so let's do baby nights this would be like a mastermind problem i actually have a mastermind game here somewhere yeah, let's see if i can find my mastermind game check it out i kid you not when i say i like mastermind this is my original mastermind game from the 1980s. I'm going to do it here so it's not too loud. All right? Check it out. <laughs> what are the odds of having mastermind handy when a mastermind question comes up? Awesome. I played a lot of this. Man, look at this dude. This guy knows where it's at. Look at that. He's the, he's the original G. <laughs> look at this guy. Look at that. Awesome. Awesome. Mastermind. The mastermind. So this is. Let me show you the inside of this. So if you don't know this game, right? It's like a board like this, and you have color pieces here, these guys. Right? And you pick a pattern. So you pick a pattern like this. Okay. So you go doing, doing, doing and then let's say red right and then you put this blocker on right and you would be sitting here and that's your pattern you picked and i'd be sitting here and i have all these opportunities and i take these things and i go okay i place sometimes you place like double color sometimes you go one color right so I would go here, I'll do it over here. Here, I should just do it like this. So you would keep this in there, right? And then you would 
this person's blocking it and then this person says okay i forget what the color code is like one is the right color and then a black would be like oh one of them was in the right place so this one has nothing in the right place but has two of the right colors right so they would go oh there's two right colors here i don't know if it's the white or not right and then you do another pattern and you see how much and from this you try to figure out um, the pattern that the person has picked right so this is joe's uh question I'm gonna, by the way the chat's pause i won't here let me uh, see if i can get caught up look at the hair be <laughs> clue was the best though. clue was awesome too <laughs> i beg you hell to god you got it lonely video what are you doing welcome welcome to our uh, live stream this game is on the internet now if you all would like to play search for code breaker code breaker is that what it is uh anti-social behavior mastermind is called code breaker a fantastic game i loved it <laughs> oh no someone's trying to and now so here here's joe's uh puzzle a numerical lock has a three-digit key now here are some clues six eight two one number is correct and one and one number is correct and well placed so six eight two six eight two let's say uh, uh, let's say a hundred let's see, make it a better color what should we call it uh, right number placed so uh, I'm gonna go 100 percent and then 50 percent 50 percent means it's a right number but non right location so 682 one number is correct and well placed so we have one number out of this combination that is 100% in the right place. Okay. 614. One number is correct but wrongly placed. 614. Uh, six, 614. Six, so this one is one number is correct but it's in the wrong place. Right? Next. 206. Two numbers are correct but wrongly placed. Two, zero, six. Two numbers are correct but in the wrong place. Seven, three, eight. Nothing is correct. Seven, three, eight. Zero. Nothing is correct. Here, let's put blank 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 nothing is correct there uh, 780 one number is correct but wrongly placed 780 one number is correct but in the wrong place oh green okay i'm gonna go get caught up Doink, 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 doink. A little bit more complicated than Othello. Othello, I loved as well. I gotta get into Go. Othello, I really loved. Also had an Othello game. Othello, so fun. Many hours spent playing that uh, during uh, COVID indoor uh, recess. Uh, Mastermind, really, Cheryl. So check this out. Nothing correct here. So we know eight, seven, eight, three are gone. They're garbage, right? That's where that's where I would start. So all eights kill them. All eights kill them. And there's no threes anywhere else, right? Oh, seven kill seven as well right 
So it kills 7 as well. Because nothing corrects. So 7 is gone as well. So we know 0 is one of the numbers. We know 0 is a number. We know 0 is a number. Whoop. But it's in the wrong place. So 0 has to be here or here. Right? Okay. What else? Two numbers are correct. So we know that's a legit. That's a number. So either two or six are correct. Right? This one, check this out. There is no two here. Oh, let's check it out. Is that going to make sense? There is no two there. One number is correct. And only one number is correct here. So two numbers. Oh, oh, so only one of these numbers is correct. So in here, only one is correct. One is in the correct location. Zero is the first number because we know that two numbers were in the puzzle, but not placed correctly in the third step. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Anti-socialist behavior. So we know the first guy is zero. Excellent. Solution. I should make this. I'm going to pick up a darker red. I'm going to find us a darker red. New pens, new pens. Let's do this. So we know the zero went there. Those were the options. So that's, we know zero doesn't belong there. Zero doesn't belong there. So it's got to be here. So from that, we know it's there. Solution. Six zero two. Oh, oops. Well, it can't be eight because eight is uh, elder god. No, wait. Yeah. So zero four two zero six two. So either two is bogus. See, it can't be six and four in the solution. Right. So one number is correct, but in the wrong place. No, no, one number is correct, but in and in the right place. Oh, check this out. So we know, we know that six is not correct here because it's not correct here. So number three has to be two. Agreed? Antisocialist behavior says zero, four, two. And the four, let's check out the four. One, is there another one? No, it can't be. Yeah, the second spot. So we know six is not here. So we know six is gone, right? Six is gone, six is gone. These guys were gone. Six is gone. So the middle term, right? We now know that six cannot be correct because we know that zero is on the far left. Yeah, can't be zero six two. If it was, then there would be two correct, but wrongly placed in the first hint. Zero four two. My issue is, so we got those two guys. Six is gone. One is correct in the right place. So it's a choice between one and four and one of these is in but it's in the wrong place and it can't be one because if one is was in the right place if that was a number that counted it would have been this we would have had one correct 
but one correct number and a correct location so it has to be four so that has to be four okay cool right yeah 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 the pia yuki then peyuki so we had antisocials behavior going zero four two and then peyuki going zero four two yeah looks like it cool great game great game sure a group of about seven of us would sit together and half watch listen to the two play playing and half chit chat brain <laughs> what braid hair and make fun of the two people on the front of the box but we had several asian friends that had been adopted by caucasian families so we all thought she was uh his daughter ah <laughs> with this guy with her with this <laughs> mastermind mastermind fun game fun game i'm off to for a cup of tea <laughs> oh my god as i rush my thing i'm off for a cup of tea <laughs> anti-socialist behavior if it was one then it would be in the correct place in the second hint yeah we won for sure we won for sure we won for sure we won yes joe says we won <laughs> fun game and this was one two three four five with mastermind i think you have 10 choices do you have 10 opportunities it's not this so we got one so they place it there so you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah you get ten opportunities we we've, we've played this every now and then on the first try you get it right i've a handful of times i've gotten correct on the first try All right sometimes and that you would have to use educated guests depending on who you're playing with and what colors they chose previously and what their character is it's like poker yep innocence yeah cheryl innocence then again i suppose she could be she could be indeed two plus first time chat two plus two equals five it really depends we had a whole bunch of situations where a whole bunch of zeros and ones and whatnot ended up being six you'll have to watch it from the beginning agent provocateurs Oh my God. <laughs> let's write down the taylor series gang let me show you what the taylor series is and i have you know i'm not going to deal with it i just want to write it out because the first question came up regarding taylor series um and it's calculus 2 so i don't know my taylor series from calc 2. Uh, it's been a long long time Here's a Taylor series. F of A, F of A plus F prime of A, which means the derivative, F prime of A over one factorial plus, oh no, not plus, times X minus A times X minus A plus, and that's the distance between the x's second derivative of a over two factorial two factorial oh not plus jeez i want to keep on putting down plus times x minus a squared plus f triple a over four three three factorial x minus a cubed plus so on okay so that means a fun oh this should be a a function at a point the taylor series for it is the function at that point plus the derivative of that function at that point over one factorial times how far away you are from the x value 
of the next point. So for example, it would be this. If you have this, let me let me read the description for this too. I'm um, just on wiki. For don't use Wikipedia, on unless it's just straight up math. Even the physics and bio, biology for sure. There's tons of BS in there, chemistry as well. But physics and mathematics, Wikipedia is not bad. There's a lot of propaganda in there, uh, indoctrination, uh, censorship, for anything else, especially related to society. Uh, that all look like the theory of relative <laughs> theory of relatively easier than this okay taylor series in mathematics the taylor series of a function is an infinite sum of terms that are expressed in terms of the function's derivatives at at a single point for most common functions the function and the sum of its taylor series are e uh, equal near this point taylor series are named after brooke taylor who introduced them in 1715 if zero is a point where the derivatives are considered a taylor series is called is also called a maclaurin series after colin maclaurin who made extensive use of the special case of taylor series in the mid 1700s the partial sum formed by the first n plus terms of the taylor series is a polynomial of degree n that is called the nth taylor polynomial of the function taylor polynomials are approximations of a function which become generally better as n increases taylor's theorem gives quantitative estimates on the error introduced by the use of such x approximations if the taylor series of a function is convergent if the Taylor series of a function is convergent, its sum is the limit of the infinite sequence of the Taylor polynomials. Uh, the, a function may differ from the sum of its Taylor series, even if its Taylor series is convergent. A function is an analytic, is analytic at a point x if it is equal to the sum of its Taylor series in some open interval or open disk in the complex plane containing x this implies that the function is analytic at every point of the so there's some terminology here that we have to know but uh applications of taylor series i forget where we applied it uh list of McLaren approximations analytic history that's the first example Fourier transformations. Oh man, we used to do Fourier transformations. Um, so I can't remember where Taylor series is used. Yep, not Taylor Swift, not Taylor Swift. I haven't converted. <laughs> this is <like> fun. <laughs> Hilarious. So basically, uh, check this out. So let's say we have a function. Here's f of x, right? right. This is f of x. Let's assume this is. Uh, this is our x-axis this is our f of x-axis this is point a right so function at point a that would be this value here this would be your f of a f of a right okay plus the derivative of this function at point a factorial x minus a so so you're doing the x so you're going like this here do quick as x approaches a so x and then let's say this is a so you're taking the two points but they're very close together if i'm getting this right so if we're doing the derivative function of this so this is x and this is f prime of x so if we take the derivative of this let's say this is constant slope of two or something like this and then it gets down to let's say this point is zero so it would be dun, 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 would it be two let's say one let's say two whatever one two so and at this point x and then a this is two 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 let's say it's at zero at this point and then it becomes negative 
and then it turns around it's still negative but decreasing at this point it would be going through zero again and then it would be going like this I guess if it's increasing so f a of prime would be here this point I guess whatever this would be okay that's as much as I can make heads or tails out of this for now oh boy makes my brain hurt me too to a certain degree but once you delve into this stuff you understand how uh, the the functions work and what all this means it's very visual and you get a feel for what it is and the most important thing about this is where is this applied right where do we use the Taylor series um, which is an important question to ask right where do we use this right now I can't remember where we use it we use this I use the Fourier transformation to filter out noise in geophysics right Fourier Fourier series right and from the sounds of a Fourier series Fourier, Fourier transformations are a version of the Taylor series right Or form of the Taylor series and when you're collecting lots of data you want to filter out the noise so you run a Fourier filter through a and gets rid of the noise variables yay I'm schmutt okay so that's sort of all I can say about that Taylor series one thing should we do gang should we talk about compound interest in regards to taxation should we take a look at that should we take a look at that or is there any math questions that you guys want to take a look you guys want to do papaya dry papaya sugar coated papaya I'll pop through those I cut these it's yummy the longer pieces delicious Joe Chicho here's another puzzle I saw yesterday that I still don't truly understand if you buy a bat and a ball for a dollar ten pounds the bat costs exactly one pound more than the ball okay how much does the ball cost and then Joe says my original answer was that dollar ten minus one equals dollar so the ball uh, must cost um, but that would mean the ball uh, but apparently answer yeah it be, that would mean the ball would only be um, 0.9 pounds right if the ball cost or the yeah if the ball cost uh, the bat would be 0.9 pounds so the way you would do it so the way you would do it is this a ball and a bat ball plus a bat cost 110 okay bat minus ball equals one the cost of the bat minus the ball right cost one right? so all you got to do is substitute do a little substitution uh, so I'm going to take this so this is your first equation this is your second equation always always remember this the number of variables you have that's how many equations you need to be able to solve a problem right so if you have one unknown you need one equation to solve it if you've got two unknowns you need two equations to solve it three unknowns three equations etc 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 so you can just bring this over Whoop. go minus ball okay now the bat is now 1.0 plus minus 
the ball. Minus the ball. And what you can do is, that's the same bat as this, right? So you can take this and sub it in for the bat. So sub two into one, equation two into one, because this is our modified equation two, right? Now you got a ball plus 1.0 minus, what? I'm doing something wrong here. Bat. Oh, because I'm in dingling. This becomes a plus, right? If the ball comes over, that's a negative. That's a plus. Plus a ball is equal to 1.10. I usually use x and y variables, but I'm using this because uh, if this was a bat and a glove, I would put b for bat and g for glove, but they're both bbs, right? Uh, bat, ba, ba. <laughs> they're both ba. Yeah, thank you, antisocialist behavior. So this becomes 1.0 plus two balls is equal to 1.01 because a ball plus a ball is two balls, right? Grab this guy, bring it over, minus 1.0. So two balls is equal to 0 0.1 and then divide by two, divide by two. So a ball is equal to 0 0.05. That's how much the ball costs. And the bat would be, therefore, the bat would be 1.1 minus 0 0.05, which equals 1.05. That's how much the bat would cost. <laughs> you notice I didn't write down the S. Captain Ranger, first time chat. Hey, Chicho, been following your content from France. Salutations, France. And never had a chance to come by and thank you for your outstanding work out there. You guys enjoy the math. Need those quiet a lot in uh, product design myself. Cheers. You use those, use those quite a lot in product design myself. Cheers. Cheers, Ranger. Thank you very much, Captain Ranger for popping in from France. Salutations. Bon bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, I took French in high school, but man, I don't remember any of it. I cheated most of it. Cheated most of the way through. And this is, by the way, this is a common problem that uh, you encounter. Uh, one of the generic problems that they give in high school anyway, or as a puzzle. Because it's instinctive. People say, oh, something costs 1.1 and one has to be a dollar more than the other. And this one costs that. How much is that? Oh, it's a dollar. No, it's not. Or a pound. It's not. Right. Should we do a little taxation? Compound interest. Here's a compound interest formula. Right. How much money you've got is principal one minus rate of interest the compounding period and t okay compounding period of time you're gonna put in there know this formula it comes in really 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 handy okay this applies many many different places okay now depending on which one of these things you have what bit of information you have and what you're trying to solve for you can just use simple algebra basic algebra you need exponents or you have to go into logs if you're looking for compounding period or time, right? But let's do lay down the problem a little bit um, initially. Okay, how are we doing for time? Not bad, not bad. So check this out. Let's assume you make $110 or $150. So this is you. You earn, earn, earn $150 okay that's what you're earning I'm making the simple numbers right you have to pay tax at 33% that means 
a third of your income goes towards taxation. So after tax, after tax, which equals one point, oops, no, 150 times, times 0 0.33. Yeah, let's make this tighter so it all fits. Tax at 33%, which equals um, 150 times 0 0.33, which equals $100, right? Approximately. Okay, let me make sure it's into the right range without rounding where we end up with rounding. If I just go to two decimal places. Yeah, 100.5, but we'll just say $100. So you get $100 left over, right? Elder God says, I do this math every week. You get $100 left over. Let's write this out. $100 left over. Or sorry, um, this, this ends up costing you $50, right? So after tax, you got 150 minus 50, you get $100 left over, right? That's how much money you're making. Okay. Now, let's say you go out and spend your $100, right? Sales tax, I don't know where you guys are. In my part of the world, we got two different types of taxes here. We got provincial tax and federal tax. And together they add up to 15% tax in general on things that you're buying. Some things don't have PSD, some things don't have GST. But it's safe to say most of the things you're buying, you're paying around 15% tax. What's the tax rate in your location if you're buying goods? What are you guys paying in general? Because I want to use a base number. I know in Canada it's fairly high, but I don't know. Uh, I think some other places are pretty high as well. I mean, Scandinavian countries is very high. I think it's higher than Canada. Canada is one of the highest places. So I don't want to go with the extreme. I want to go with what the consensus is. Do you guys pay like 10% tax when you buy stuff? 8%, 15% like we do? What do you guys end up paying? Average tax would it be average tax? I don't think. No, I'm not going to look up average tax. That'd be crazy. Average tax, where? Where would the average tax be? No replies. We're gonna go with fifteen percent. Yours is twenty percent, Aldergod? In the UK you guys pay twenty percent when you buy stuff? Damn, that's high. Apparently sales tax in Bhutan is fifty percent. <laughs> Yikes. So fifteen percent is on the low end of you guys. Six point five percent local sales tax here, J Paw. You must be in the States. You guys have state and federal uh, in the states as well, no? When you buy products. And in Alberta, they don't have any uh, provincial on certain things. They pay less than we do. So let's stick with 15%. Let's assume 15% tax. 15% tax paid. Pay 15% tax on purchases. Let's put it that way. You pay 15% tax on purchases. Pay 15% tax on purchases. Okay. Should we do a table? Let's do a table. Figure out, because this $100 is in circulation, right? This is how much productivity you put into the system you created 
$150 worth of $150 of energy into the system now if you have your own business or you got your corporation and you're working for and if they're profitable then they actually this is how much you put in but they end up getting more out of it because they're taking $150 let's say you spent you get paid $50 an hour it took you three hours to make this thing right so you got paid $150 but the company that sells this thing sells it for $200 right so your $150 the system turned into $200 right For a corporation but you get taxed you got taxed fifty dollars you get to take home a hundred dollars right I'm moving to Canada for that extra five percent and I can also <laughs> fight um, a tyranny as well awesome you're welcome to join us elder God right now you only have a hundred dollars let's make a table one hundred dollars you go out and spend a hundred dollars you get fifteen percent taxed right that means you got $85 is left in the economy in the circulation because $15 of that government they came and took $15 of that money so not not only did you pay 50% of your income tax right so out of $150 that you earned the first purchase you make with that hundred dollars you only got eighty five dollars of it right real buying power because fifteen percent went to the government right now someone else takes this money eighty five dollars and they when they do a next purchase that's again fifteen percent tax right so eighty five times 0.85 really that means 72 72.25 dollars is back in the economy minus 85 and 12 dollars and 75 cents went to the government more right now take that $72.25. The next person that buys something pays 15% tax. So let's just multiply this by times. Oops, let me reset it. 72.25, uh, 72.25 times 0.8 five which is what is remain now there is sixty one dollars and four messy messy forty one cents forty one cents left that means the government seventy two point two five the government took another ten dollars and eighty four cents ten dollars and eighty four cents you continue this right at the end of the day how many circulations is it going to take for this thing to reach zero for the government to have taken all hundred dollars of your worth what you generated right so out of the hundred and fifty dollars the initial tax you pay is fifty dollars you get a hundred dollars you take your hundred dollars you spend it in the economy now there's only 85 dollars of economy money left in the economy because 15 percent of it went to the government that 85 85 dollars by the way if a company is making this or a person is making this as an income remember at the end of the year the government is going to take a chunk of this as income tax as well all right this is the bare minimum that's happening right because every time there's changing of hands that gets put into the ledger and if a company or a person is making profit off that the government comes and says give me more money right so this is bare minimum assuming nobody's making a profit 
just by spending your money in the system every time you spend it the government gets a piece of the pie right until you add all these up so after three three iterations one two three three times add these guys up here let's add them up I'm just doing some fun mental math just because what's happening is taxes are going to go up interest rates about to go up and people are about to pay a heavy price right so after three times of your original hundred dollars being used in the economy another 38 dollars of it 38.59 right, of the hundred the government has taken okay that's another 38 percent of the original hundred that you got back because the government took a third of it to begin with right wow 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 now we can use a compound interest formula to figure out how much money would be left what should we use let's see we're not going to use time and actually we're not even going to use the compound interest we could use simple interest formula i equals prt is that simple interest i is equal to p r t simple interest principal rate time interest that you pay no we don't even need to use that we use a compound i guess sure let's see <laughs> and the n we're just going to leave as one and t would be the number of times that we're doing transactions this could be first year second year third year right no compounding here okay so this formula reduces down to a is equal to p 1 minus r to the power of t right so the way this works is because we're not going to compound there's nothing you're paying in the middle we're going to assume right so how much money is left let's say we go through 10 10 iterations of this right of your original hundred dollars if you keep one minus 0 0.1 percent which is the interest that you're going to be paying per transaction let's say you do it 10 times this is once twice three times let's say you do it 10 times let's see how much money is left and then what we can do is calculate how much money when do we reach zero after how many iterations and by the way this occurs on every hundred dollars someone earns right so your next hundred you get to zap fifteen dollars not have to get go on the first 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 spend right as your principal decreases the interest that you're paying reduces as well so in the end this graph just looks like this it's peaks down right so this would be uh, 0 0.85 0 0.85 let's say to the power of 10 point times 100 Doink. so after 100 after 10 times of spending of your original hundred dollars going through 10 transactions there's only going to be 19 dollars <laughs> 19 dollars and 65 cents left and keep in mind the last five iterations or six iterations the there's less and less taxes being taken off because this principle is a lot less right 19.6 uh, 69 19.69 19.69 okay that's something to keep in mind gang um i just thought it was worth putting this out there because uh this is something that we're gonna have to start thinking about as interest rates uh kick up in the world um because they're they're about to be uh unfortunately right unfortunately we see we see we see we see right we see we see we see we see as my friend says spending money to finance your destruction spending money to finance your destruction indeed indeed right indeed 
crazy times and this is bare minimum bare minimum okay bare minimum um, we need to as a society do something about this uh, and those in power are working towards getting a bigger chunk of this because what's going on right now is a lot of centralized institutions are getting together and saying you know what we need to tax society more because we need a better carbon footprint we need to become environmentally better we need to prepare for whatever else is coming down the pipe we need to collaborate and a lot of the politicians bureaucrats that are in power that are imposing imposing this stuff these taxes this theft this theft um, a lot of those people have not been elected they have been appointed okay and a lot of those people are not the best of us but the they are the worst of us okay uh, because a lot of it comes through centralization of power and the one thing we have learned throughout history uh, human history is centralization of power leads to complete corruption right as the saying goes absolute power corrupts absolutely right and when centralized institutions are given absolute power over our capital our productivity then that absolute power has been corrupted absolutely I thought this was important to put out there uh, just so we can relate the mathematics into everything else that we've been doing right and we will talk about a lot more about this stuff in the future uh, but we go baby steps what else gang what else what else gang what else they're only using the environment as a smoke screen in my opinion in my opinion as well elder god in my opinion as well indeed uh, but this is mathematics but this is mathematics but this is mathematics all we can do is look at the numbers and go something's off right something's off especially when these tax rates are going up and up and up uh, becomes dangerous a little bit uh, from my perspective anyway from my perspective Nafayed, how are you doing staying for a tea or two <laughs> We're almost at the end of the stream. Up time, are we not? Up time. We did some good math. We did some good math today. Fun math today. Right? Fun mathematics. Joe, could we do a question about transforming a physics problem into a math problem? Um, sure. It's. Uh, do you have one in mind? Physics can go down so many directions, and a lot of physics problems are. Uh, we're working with known equations, models, right? So, we sort of have to take into account what what is known. what we know about a certain situation right so like for example force equals um, f equals ma right so force is equal to mass times acceleration one of the most simpler simplest things right Newton's second law the second law believe, right so that's a formula that we know force of an object is equal to mass times its acceleration so if you want to find out a uh, question would be uh, what's the force of an object find force of an object uh, with mass of 15 kilograms accelerating at 50 meters per second right then 
F equals ma, which is being, oh, the force of an object is equal to mass times acceleration. And this is going to be, uh, what is it, 75. And the units, this is mass, is going to be, the units is kilograms times meters per second. That's what we got. The kilo, kilograms is the mass, and meters per second is the, meters per second squared is the acceleration, and this unit is called newtons. The force of that object is 75 newtons, right? So as for the derivation of this formula, oh my, I can't remember the derivation of the formula. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've looked at it, but I can't remember it. Uh, so here's a problem. A ball is shot into the air. This is kinematics. A ball is shot into the air from the edge of a building 50 feet above the ground. Its initial velocity is 20 feet per second. The equation is... Da -da -da -da. Oh, when they give you the equation, it's the easiest stuff. And the question asks, how long until the ball hits the ground? Let's do this. Physics question, when you're given the equation, should be the easiest physics questions that you ever do. So here's, here's the formula that they've given you. The equation is this, um, and that's going to be distance, I believe, right? So the distance, d, is it d? d is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 20 t plus 50. Is it d? Da, 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 da. Its initial velocity is 20 feet per second. So something's wrong. We need uh, so ball is shot into the air from the edge of the building 50 feet above the ground. So here's a building into the air. I'm assuming it's being shot like this, going like this. Putting around to a velocity of 20 feet per second. 20 feet per second. Uh, the equation is that, and the equation asks how long until the ball hits the ground. To answer the question, you simply need to solve the quadratic equation. But how do we actually derive the formula from the word problem? In the, first, uh, the formula from the word problem is driven like the quadratic formula this thing that you're talking about this is the quadratic formula of the simplest the basic quadratic formula of this from mathematics right now these quadratic formulas uh, the that model projectiles a lot of it occurs through observation right so what they do, if you've ever sat in a lab, uh, in a physics lab, what they'll do is they'll uh, do projectiles. And they have some kind of sometimes flash, uh, some kind of light system that flashes. And in the background, they'll have some kind of sheet with, where it embeds the projectile, right? So once you do that, then what you can do, if you model this stuff, you can throw this on a Cartesian coordinate system, right? Let's assume you say, oh, okay, you know what? To, to make this simple, I'm going to put my X and Y axis here, right? So I'm going to make the peak of the thing my uh, origin for the Cartesian coordinate system. And then you can take points from here, X and Y, take points from here, X and Y, x and y you know x and y and do some algebra to come up with equations for these functions right because from the motion you would say oh this is obviously parabola right if this is a parabola then uh, general formula for a parabola is a x minus p squared plus q that's the vertex form of a parabola and if the origin is zero zero God, I'm so bad on that. <laughs> also, hi, sorry. Hi, hi, Judah. How are you doing? Then P and Q would be zero. So F of X would equal A 
x, right? Boop. A x squared. And then what you can do, you have to calculate your a value. Well, if you want to calculate your a value, all you got to do is take one of these points, plug them in, get your a value, and then your function for this thing would be, oops, whatever the a value is, the number x. So you get that back, and that's your formula and all that jazz. Right? Um, a lot of it is through modeling. A lot of it is through modeling. Uh, there are some that are derived, right, 100% from other uh, formulas that we have that we bring in together and say, oh, this is this, this is this, this is this, is a, here's a new formula, right, here's a new formula. Gang, do not forget, what is this called? This is called projectiles, right, first time chat, smuggy nine, I think we don't need formula for such uh, questions. Um formulas come in handy and these formulas if they give them to you in the question in physics really easiest questions you can do easiest questions you do okay and gang do not forget do not forget thank you other god free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity for more information you see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Censor 2. I think most, uh, Smuggy, I think most mathematical questions can be solved without any derivative. Possibly, yeah, a lot. Joe was given $100 by his parents as his pocket money. Joe meets a very pretty girl, Karen. Karen smiles at Joe. How much money does Joe have now? Zero. <laughs> Funny smudgy, hilarious Judah. Did they <laughs> did they use this for calculation for like military stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mathematics is 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 used everywhere. Is everywhere, everywhere. Other <laughs> God says zero as well. <laughs> now you can do the calculus and figure out what Joe got out of that deal, right? Actually, we do have a Joe in chat right now. Joe, what did you get out of that deal, man? <laughs> well, I don't know. It depends what Joe got, right? Bad Lieutenant Lieutenant TV. Hey, how's it going, Chicho? It's non-elder, just under rebranding. Also, bad Lieutenant Bad Lieutenant TV. <laughs> Funny. Funny. Rebranding. Rebranding is always good. Almost always good. Judah, the correct answer is half of everything you are. <laughs> Funny. Weekend at Barney's. How are you doing? Hit you a long time. Hope you're doing well. Doing well. Weekend at Barney's. Thank you very much. Hope you're doing well. Also, Joe's smiling as well. <laughs> Hilarious. That's it. We're going to call the stream. We've gone down the dark path. We've gone down the dark path. Gang, fun. Fun math stream. Fun math stream. Yeah, we did good. We did good. I think so. We had a lot of fun. We came, we saw, we partied. Right? We came, we saw, we partied. Fun stuff, fun stuff. We can have good news, by the way. I graduated my college degree in mechanical engineering. Awesome, awesome. That's great news, man. Mechanical engineering is a great degree to have, by the way. Great degree to have. Joe Chicho, do you know anything about floating point numbers and computer science? No, um, no, no. I I came across some, but nah. during two two uh, two courses I took in programming, but no, I don't know anything about it. Judah, I do need help with math when I take my GED. Stay tuned. Okay. 
not fat stay tuned and judah you're welcome to come by during our mass streams uh if you need some help we'll talk to us next time maybe a mystic mass stream possibly possibly gotta look into those uh solids right and there's so much mathematics and you know a lot of religions and spirituality and all over the place jay powell fun getting back to some math today thanks to my pleasure jay my pleasure intelligent blueberry we can have barneys yeah it was a good one we can barneys uh, is, is this intelligent blueberry is this you again man the name branding confuses the crap out of me chicho when is the next comic book stream ah uh, working on it working on it uh I, i'm gonna say sooner rather than later okay uh, within the month within the month we're gonna sit down and do some readings i think okay i got a stack of they're over there been going through reading a lot of comic books and taking segments high uh marking off segments that i want to read to you guys smudgy a vehicle with mileage 15 kilometers uh, per liter contains 20 liters the vehicle gets some defects as a result of which five liter of fuel gets wasted per hour when the engine is on uh, with what minimum speed the vehicle has to move to travel 20 kilometers per hour with existing month fuel if it travels with the uniform oh man i would have to look that up uh, you have to do it another time we can yeah intelligent blueberry weekend at barney's awesome awesome you've been going by weekend at barney's for a long time and smudgy uh, uh sorry we're gonna have to do that problem at another date at another mass stream okay gang thank you for being here that makes my heart hurt bad lieutenant that makes my heart hurt joe chicho have you got much experience in programming no not much not much when i was taking programming it was pascal and fortran that were they were that were prevalent and both those languages were horrendous my god i hated it so um i didn't take any more okay smudgy smudgy all the guys says that's my kind of mathematics gang thank you for being here if you want to know what this work is about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o yeah we could solve it in uh gilded so uh smudgy you're welcome to join our gilded server and we've got a forum there for mathematics and we could definitely go in there and, uh you know you can post a question and see if we can people people can solve it right finished my bone donor and enjoy the sun awesome awesome gang for those of you that are supporting this work on patreon thank you very much for the support it is in large part because of the support we're getting on patreon as well as twitch that we're able to do what it is that we are doing so i thank you very much for the support on both these platforms thank you for being here gang thank you for the discussion and sharing information and mods thank you for taking care of business i do announce these last streams 30 minutes before we go live on minds you get part of getter and bit club and we'll see where else we end up going for live streams where we don't have any visuals we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chicho is a podcast and those podcasts should be available in your favorite pl platform including spotify itunes and google play thanks for the stream chicho we'll uh watch it later as relaxation program awesome plutonic pluralist thank you for being here and gang we will be uploading this live stream in its entirety plus whatever segments we can take out to sensor tube to pitch to rumble and to odyssey and again gang if you're watching this stuff only on sensor tube you're not getting the full content of what we're producing and you should definitely be joining us on pitch rumble or odyssey okay and that's where we're fully active not on censored platforms aside from that gang most likely live streams next weekend we'll see what we end up doing i got a couple of, i actually want to do a couple of whispering live streams uh, but more on that later gang i hope you have a fantastic week and we'll talk uh, on gilded online uh, on some of these forums and most likely most definitely next weekend bye everyone <laughs>